it's Terry and welcome back to my channel and today I have a really exciting video because I've been planning to do this video for quite some time now. Today I'm going to be doing a review on my DJI Spark and this is the smallest drone right now in the market I believe and I actually got this for Alexander's birthday which was back in January so I've had it now for definitely over a month so I think that I can definitely give you guys a good review on this it's not really a first impression because I have been using this quite a lot recently Alexander and I have really been taking it to a lot of places and flying it around and everything so I really want to share with you guys my opinions about this amazing little drone here. Quick disclaimer this video is not sponsored at all DJI did not send me this drone they didn't ask me to do a review it's all personally my opinions so let's get started with this review. So this specific drone is in the color alpine white and it retails on the DJI website for $399 but I bought mine from Best Buy for $349. I recently bought the remote separately honestly actually arrived today and that's what really inspired me to finally create this video for you guys so by the time this video is up Alexander and I will have tested out the drone which I will show you guys footage and give you guys my opinion as well if the remote is really worth it and um, that's all gonna be in this video as well so with the DJ spark you have 16 minutes of flight time which is honestly in my opinion I think it's great for the average consumer especially if you are just trying to get a nice shot of let's say like an event or something or you're trying to get like some beautiful scenery for a YouTube video if you're a YouTuber or whatever the case may be I think that it's great for just if you want to have a little drone that you could just have those drone shots with and this drone has a built-in camera it has a two axis gimbal so it just moves up and down and side to side I've flown another drone before and it was the 3DR Solo and it was my first time using it at the time but that's a drone that's thousands of dollars honestly and I just borrowed it from my father's friend and my experience with that was honestly terrible because it just was so complicated to use and I couldn't figure out how to turn on the GoPro so it record and fly at the same time because there was it was just a very complicated setup in my opinion and so when I got the spark it was just it made so much sense just the way it connects and the way it just works you know so you don't have to really mess around with the camera settings or anything is just all built in which just makes it a whole lot easier. This specific camera records in 1080p which that's the standard for most monitors. For example, if you're looking on a phone screen, you wouldn't really see a difference between a 4K or a 1080p. Honestly, it wouldn't make a difference to me if I decided to invest more money into the Maverick Pro or just this one. This one was obviously a lot more affordable and I really like the size of it that it's super duper small like literally like look how small this thing is. Super cute and I love how it comes in different colors as well. The max speed it can go up to and I know that this is the, with the remote in flight mode it goes up to 50 kilometers per hour which is equivalent to around 31 miles per hour and it also has a USB charger which is you can plug it into your car charger you can charge it using a portable battery so that just makes it a whole lot easier for you to just take it around everywhere that you want to. It has 60 minutes of flight time according to the DJI website and I personally think that's plenty of time but you do need to really plan out your shots before you take it out. That's a really big tip I have for you guys if you're using this drone for the first time that you really want to plan out your shots. I know that any stores that sell it, Amazon, Best Buy, the DJ website, Apple even, all these stores that sell the, the specific drone, they do have two options of buying this drone. One of them being the drone itself and then the other option being the combo or bundle pack. And so I personally went with the option of getting just the drone itself and then later deciding that I want to get the remote and everything. The thing is with the drone itself, What's in the box, it comes with a charger, a micro USB cable, it comes with the DJI drone, a flight battery, four propellers and two spare ones, and a little storage box as well. And then just recently I bought the remote on Amazon as I said before, so I will link all this down in the description below so you will know where to buy it. And honestly the remote, it was on sale more than the DJI website. Like. I think I looked around to see which uh, store had the best price and Amazon, surprisingly, was the one that had the best one. So with the combo, it basically includes everything that I just listed off, but it also includes another extra battery pack, a full spare set of all the propeller pairs, 
It also has propeller guards, a battery charger so that you can actually charge multiple batteries all at the same time. And it also includes a shoulder bag to carry everything with you. And of course it includes a remote. So that's the thing with the combo. And I think the combo is around $200 more than just the normal price. And yeah, so I think that if you want to just have this drone on your own and just test it out, you can have it be on your phone, which I will show you guys in a moment how to set up your drone to be connected to your phone. And you can use your phone as the remote as well. So you actually don't need the remote. I'm gonna now show you guys how I set up my DJI Spark to my iPhone using the DJI Go app. So let's just get into that one. To use my drone, I first turn it on by pressing the power button once, quickly followed by one longer hold. I have my Wi-Fi settings open and wait until the spark connects. Usually the password is 12341234, but then you can choose to change it later. After a successful connection is made, I open the DJI Go app. My drone is already connected, but when using it for the first time, you will need to scan the code that is located under the drone battery or on the side of the box, and then the same goes for the remote. Once you are connected, you can see the settings and options before your flight. It is important to calibrate your drone before launching to ensure a safe space for your drone to fly. In the settings, you can also view your battery percentage, battery temperature, and remaining space on your SD card. You can also set a maximum altitude and speed of the gimbal for a more cinematic shot. To fly, click on take off and slide to launch. In intelligent flight mode, you can see the different ways you can fly your Spark using different modes. Active Track has the drone locked onto one subject. Tap Fly is just as the name is. Tap on your screen and the Spark will fly to that area. Just to talk about a few examples. In the remote, you have the basic functions for easy access. Camera controls, recording button, photo button, sport mode, the home button for launching, and the pause button. And of course, your camera control for panning. To turn off the drone, just hold down the power button. And the same goes for the remote. And that's the basics of how to use your DJI Spark. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and that way I know that you guys wanna see more videos similar to this one in the future. And also subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh, no, no. <laughs>